I didn't use Blender for this, I didn't touch Mocha, and I didn't even open After Effects, and I definitely didn't spend three days compositing. I did these in minutes, literally in minutes. Today I'm testing out an AI tool called Mago Studio, and honestly, this is the first time I felt an AI tool is a real production asset, not a random filter, not a gimmick, but something that actually gives control to VFX artists. So I talk a lot about AI on this channel. Usually it's the same old stuff. It's always the same, it flickers, it's random, it's low quality, it feels like a slot machine. That's exactly why I wanted to show you Mago. It's a video to video tool, but it actually feels designed for people who make videos, especially VFX artists. So whether you're doing cinematic ads or weird VFX shorts, this fits into a professional workflow way better than many tools I've tried in the past. So I've put it through the ringer. Here are some scenarios that usually break AI from my experience, zombie, a full character replacement, an animal replacement, and this rhino horn shot, which honestly blew my mind, made me wanna create this video. So without further ado, let's dive into it. First up, biological textures. I shot this clip of me on a green screen doing some basic zombie movements. Now here's where Mago really separates itself from most video to video tools. Instead of just asking, how strong do you want the transformation? Mago lets you choose how the AI should understand your video. You've got different models for different use cases, replacing a character, adding or replacing elements, or transforming your footage based on a reference frame. For this zombie shot, I'm using the first frame model, which means the AI is basing the entire transformation on a reference frame that I choose. And what's important is it doesn't need to be the literal first frame. If your character doesn't appear until later in the shot, you could tell Mago exactly which frame to use as the reference. Now to get even more control, this is where control nets come in. Control nets define what structural information the AI should respect when transforming your video. Here, I'm using depth, which means Mago is generating a depth map of my footage. You can see it here. This is the AI understanding what's closer, what's farther away, and how my face and body should be in 3D space. There are some other control nets too, depending on the shot, but for characters, depth is huge. And if you want better facial accuracy, especially lip syncing, you can enable face mesh. Face mesh helps Mago better track eye movement, mouth shapes, and subtle face motion. Now look at the results. The texture actually sticks to my face, the jaw movement holds, the shoulders stay grounded. This isn't the AI inventing a new person, it's understanding my performance and layering the transformation on top of it. So if you ever spent hours in a makeup chair for VFX, you'll know exactly how much time this one saved. Let's look at another example, and I'll walk through the interface again so you can see how this applies outside of faces. So I'm in Mago and I have my clip uploaded here. This is a guy just walking his camel through the desert, and here you could just kind of choose a frame. This is a nice vertical timeline. And as you generate different versions, it'll kind of populate on the right hand side here. So over here on the left hand side, we have our selected input, which is our video clip. And over here, it gives you different presets. So if you don't want to kind of mess around with all the different numbers and parameters and figure out which engine to use, you could just hit one of the presets and it basically does the job for you. So you see they have different ones, animate, which is replace your character, close-up shots, basic restyle, restyle fast moving people, and then they have Kling 01, which is one of my favorites. But for now, we're gonna go with replace your character. I'm just gonna show you how this works. You see, once you click that, this kind of generates the engine that you're gonna use. If you go to advanced, these are all the different settings, the mask and the quality and animation settings that you could adjust. I'm just gonna keep these as a default just for demonstration purposes, but definitely play around with them, check it out for yourself. So going back to basic here, so from here, you could upload your character reference. So if you kind of generate a character scene or you edit something in Photoshop that you want to upload, you can go ahead and upload that as the character reference. I'm going to click on generate your character and it's going to bring you to the modify frame panel. And you see here it has your frame 57 selected, which is the exact frame that I had my little cursor here, which is if you want to pick a frame, if you want to use your first frame, if your character comes into frame, partially through, you could select the frame that you want to adjust. For me, I'm just going to make sure that this is at the first frame and I'm going to click on modify frame, go back to here. And if I want, you could upload a reference, just if you have any kind of visuals that you want to mimic, like a style, you could upload that down here under model. I'm going to select nano banana pro because it's one of my favorites. It does a really good job. And down here you could 
edit your prompts, you could just do a text. I'm gonna do a text to image. I'm gonna say, so then down here, you could choose the amount of versions you wanna output. I'm gonna click on, I'm just gonna make four and click on generate image. So from here, it generates a bunch of different dinosaurs because I didn't specify the type of dinosaur I wanted. I'm gonna actually go with this guy because I notice he has four legs versus a T-Rex. It might get a little bit complicated with the camel. So the camel has four legs. So this little difference in the legs might be difficult in post. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this one. Look at the realism. It still even has the stuff on its back like the camel did. Really cool. So from here, I could click iterate. I could click use this or I could download it. So I'm actually gonna download it but I'll show you if I click use this, it's gonna populate the image here and it's gonna generate prompt based on your video that you uploaded and your image reference. So this is man leading a triceratops in a desert landscape. So that's what your output is. You're gonna go ahead and generate that and then hopefully you get that. But because I'm replace your character and I actually have an animal and a character, I don't think this is the best preset for what I want. So I'm actually gonna use the Kling 01 which is a little bit different. It doesn't have that modify frame feature because it goes to the Kling 01 interface, which is you have your elements that you could upload if you have different angles of your subject, or you could just upload your image reference. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload my image reference, which is the dinosaur that I downloaded before. This is the frame that it generated. So I'll upload that. I still have my prompt that it generated, and I'm gonna go ahead and click generate. Okay, so then when it's all done, you take a look and you see that's pretty perfect. It even has the little seat that's bouncing around on the top of his back and the shadow is there. I mean, this is really, really good. If I wanna download it, I can click on that. If I wanna go ahead and edit it, and let's say I wanna change the prompt to it, I can click on it and then it'll generate another layer here. So if you wanna just change the style, if you have another reference image, it's all gonna populate in this one project. I added a claymation stylized image here and I just had the prompt reflect that. And you see here, it added another layer here, which has the, one has the dinosaur and this one has the claymation version. Same idea here, Mago is analyzing motion and structure first and then applying the transformation based on the model you choose. This is incredible for previs, stylized animation, or fast concept work. It's like rotoscoping, but instant. So here's another example of a full character replacement and you just wanna see the actual quality and the detail that it maintains. So I have this reference image here of this little kind of Muppet-like character. And I swapped it out with my female character that's right here. And I did the Animate V1 and take a look at the results. Pretty amazing stuff. The detail that it kept from that reference image, replacing that character and maintaining everything else in the scene, including the fire, pretty amazing stuff. Another amazing thing about Mago is everything that you curate is basically on your vertical timeline here. So here's the starting point that I had. This is my original video clip. Then you have the each iteration underneath it. So let's say I wanted to change this one, for example, I can click on these three dots and click iterate. And under settings, this is gonna populate as the selected input, which is pretty amazing. So then from here, I could generate a new output, let's say I wanted to use this one, and I could generate it from there, I could add my prompt, and then that's gonna show up below this, right there. So it's very streamlined, and you can keep going back and forth to each result, and you're not gonna lose your place in time. All right, so here's an example that really sold me for this tool. This is the rhino horn. So I shot myself in front of a green screen, and this is just me with scotch tape with an X on my forehead. Didn't really know how it was gonna turn out but I just decided to test it out and look a little stupid for a bit. So I decided to use the Animate V1 because it says here, close-up shots, change the face appearance while keeping the expressions. And that's exactly what I wanted. So I decided to go with that, kept all the advanced settings the same. And here I generated a reference image. As you can see here, I generated quite a few. I decided to go with this one. And then in my prompt, I just, Put, replace the X on his forehead with the horn referenced in the image. 
So the algorithm actually noticed the X on my forehead and knew exactly where to put it, given the reference image as well. So lo and behold, this is the result of that rhino horn shot. Pretty amazing stuff. This is what I mean by control. We're not just saying make a cool video and crossing our fingers. We're taking our footage, our composition, our timing, our performances, and letting Mago do the heavy lifting on the VFX layers. So if you're working in ads, game cinematic, or just creating content, this is the difference between projects taking weeks and projects taking hours. Use my code LINES to get 60% off your first month of the pro plan. It's only for the first 500 users, so don't miss it. And here are some of the final results.